provide you with the lowest per GB rates, night or day. SLT 4G, driving you ever forward. Interim order. Appeal court prevents PM and 49 ministers from holding office. Mahindra Rajapaksa to challenge the ruling. Who really has the authority? UNP leader Ranil Vikramasinghe says that the latest ruling provides clarification over who holds authority as the Prime Minister. Other matters for unity. Opposition leader R. Sambandhan discusses the issue of political prisoners with the President. Gas ambitions. Qatar announced that it will quit from the OPEC amid geopolitical tensions. Bike ka gatot phone ne ka. Oh, tora gat Yamaha bike madil sandha rupeeal hatalis dahak ta kwa watina smartphone ne ka no mile. Ik mangkaran November tiha dahak pa pamanai. Konde si saitai. Amatanda bindu ay ka ay ka ay hatai. Hai si namia, hai si namia. AMW tim pamanai. Good evening. This is First at Nine on Sri Lanka's news channel, other than a 24-7, and I'm in Diviriamwatha. In the latest twist of the political impasse grappling Sri Lanka's governance, the country's Court of Appeal today issued an interim injunction order restraining Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa and his cabinet from functioning until the hearing of the writ of quo warranto filed against them holding office is concluded. The court fixed December 12th as the date to proceed with the hearing of the petition until which the interim order will be in effect. Notice was also issued on the 49-member cabinet and Mahinda Rajapaksa to appear before the court on the 12th of this month. On the 26th of October this year, in a sudden move, President Maitri Pala Sirisena appointed former President Mahinda Rajapaksa as the Prime Minister, removing Ranil Vikramasinghe from office. Later, with the dissolution of Parliament that followed, appointments were made to the Cabinet of Ministers in several rounds. However, Sri Lanka entangled in politics upheaval with two no-confidence motions brought in Parliament by the opposition against the new Prime Minister and the newly appointed Cabinet of Ministers, after which the Speaker of Parliament, Karu Jai Surya, informed President Maitri Pala Sirisena that those were passed in the House with a majority of votes. On the 23rd of November, in a petition, 122 legislators, including members of the United National Party, Tamil National Alliance, Sri Lanka Muslim Congress, All Ceylon's People's Congress and the Janata Vimukti Peramuna, challenged Mahinda Rajapaksa's authority to hold office after he lost the no-confidence votes. The petition was first taken up for consideration on the 30th of November and Premier Rajapaksa's Attorney President's Counsel Garmini Marapana told the court that the said no-confidence motion was not passed in the Parliament with due parliamentary process or a proper vote. The writ of Ko Baranto against Prime Minister Rajapaksa and the continuation of his cabinet in office with no parliamentary majority was once again taken up for consideration before a two-member judge bench of Justices Preeti Padman Surasena and Arjuna Obesekara today. After consideration, the case in detail, the Court of Appeal issued an interim injunction order this evening, restraining Mahinda Rajapaksa and his cabinet from holding office. Justice Preeti Padman Surasena announcing the verdict said that given the fact that 122 out of 225 members of parliament had filled the petition, the court also considered its impact on the country both locally and internationally. The Court of Appeal asked the 49 respondents of the case and Mahinda Rajapaksa to appear in court on December 12th when the case will be taken up again to explain on what basis they hold office. Following the pronunciation of the ruling of the Court of Appeal, parliamentarians from several major political parties expressed their views to media at the court premises today. ජනාධිපති <laughs> Saya tak tahu biasa nak kita sebangun kerana kalipak kiri mana bawa bawa naik ke lada lada. Orang suruh. Tukar mana? Mei pun kiri mei alih mei tanpa perpatkan bulu anda jangan dikira. 
විශ්වාස භංග යෝජනාවක් දෙකක් සම්මත කර ගත්තා කියන්න පදනම උඩ තමයි මේ පෙත්සම් ඉදිරිපත් කරේ. ඒ නිසා එතුමන්ලාව නැවත පත් කරන්න බෑ. උසාවිය තීන්දුවට ගරු කරලා 122ක් මන්ත්‍රීවරුගේ ඉල්ලීම ගරු කරලා පාර්ලිමේන්තු මැජොරිටියට ගරු කරලා අධිකරු ජනාධිපතිතුමා වහාම එක්ස ජාතික පරමණ නියෝජිතයා රනිල් වික්‍රමසිංහ මහතාව අගමැති දුරට ඒ වගේම එදා 26 වෙනිදා තිබිච්ච කැබිනට් එක හේමම පත් කරන එක තමයි එතුමා කරන ලොකු ගෞරවයක් නීති අනුරජයක් නොවේ නම් ඒ සඳහා විශ්වාස මංගයක් ගේන ක්‍රමයක් මේ පාර්ලිමේන්තුවේ ස්ථාවර නියෝගල තිබෙනවා ඒක මේ හදිසියේ කරන්න පුළුවන් වැඩක් නෙවෙයි ඒකට දින පහක් කල් දෙන න්‍යාය පත්‍රය තියෙන ඕන විදිහට කරානම් කවුරුත් ඔකට මුකුත් කියන්නේ නැහැ ඉතින් වැරදි විශ්වාස මංගයක් ගෙනල්ලා ඒ මත රැඳිලා අපිට කිව්වහම ඒක පිළිගන්න කියලා මං හිතන්නේ අපිට ඒක පිළිගන්න පුළුවන් කමක් ඔයසේ වෙතත් අපි විශ්වාස කරනවා අපිට පුළුවන් වෙයි කියලා කසිය 13ක බලයක් වෙන්නන් එවැනි විශ්වාස මං යෝජනාව නිවැරදි විදිහට අපි බලාපොරොත්තු වන ආකාරයෙන් අධිකරණය වග උත්තරකරුවන්ට නොතිස් නිකුත් කරන්න තීරණය කරා හැබැයි අපි බලාපොරොත්තු නොවුණු ආකාරයෙන් අධිකරණයේ විසින් අගමැතිතුමා ඇමති මණ්ඩලයත් කටයුතු කිරීම තාවකාලික අත්විටුවමින් යෝගයක් නිකුත් කළා කූට ලේඛන මත පදනම් වුණු නිසා ඒව කූට ලේඛන බව සාක්ෂි සහිතව අපි ඉදිරිපත් කරපු නිසා අධිකරණයේ මෙවැනි තීන්දුවක් ලබා දීම ගැන අපි විමතියට පත් වෙනවා අපි අධිකරණයේ තීන්දුවට ගරු කරනවා නමුත් තීන්දුවත් සමග එක්ක වෙන්නේ නැහැ Issuing a special statement this evening, Parliamentarian Mahindra Rajapaksa, meanwhile, noted that he will not accept the interim order issued by Sri Lanka's Court of Appeal, preventing him and his cabinet from holding office. He went on to emphasize that an appeal is currently being prepared to be presented at the Supreme Court tomorrow against today's court ruling. In his statement, Rajapaksa went on to stress that the Supreme Court holds the highest authority in deciding matters related to the constitution of the country. Rajapaksa also called on the general public to focus on urging for a general election that will ultimately represent the majority voice of the population of Sri Lanka. Meanwhile, leader of the UNP Ranil Wickremesinghe says the interim order issued by the Court of Appeal proves and provides clarification over who holds authority as the premier of the country. He made these remarks addressing a public rally in Gaul this evening. A protest and a public rally organized by the United National Party was held in Gaul. The rally was attended by party leader Ranil Wickremesinghe and a number of UNP members. In a backdrop where President Maitri Pala Sirisena is adamant that he will not reappoint Ranil Wickremesinghe as Prime Minister of Sri Lanka, Chairman of his party parliamentarian Kabir Hashim in a letter to the leader of the opposition said that Wickremesinghe will in fact be the UNP's nominee for premiership. Earlier the vehicular parade drive for justice worked off by the United National Party under the theme defeat the constitutional conspiracy by Maitri and Mahinda concluded at Mahiangane yesterday. A 
A meeting between President Maitapala Sirisena and parliamentarians of the Tamil National Alliance took place following the interim injunction order was issued. The meeting took place at the Presidential Secretariat. Speaking to media, Sambandan said that he uh, believes the President must act soon to solve the current political situation. Meanwhile, the 13 petitions filed by the Supreme Court seeking the quashing of the Gazette notification issued by President Maitapala Sirisena dissolving Parliament will be taken up for hearing from tomorrow. It will be heard until Thursday, the 6th of this month, before a seven-member panel of judges. Earlier, a three-judge bench headed by Chief Justice Nalin Pereira granted a stay order until the 7th of this month. Representatives of the civil organizations held a rally in Maradana today, calling for an immediate general election. Meanwhile, many other protests were also held across the country, expressing similar sentiment. Me mohote me velavi. Kalayatu, Pradhana, Tamakari, Tamai, Maha Panti Varanegata Yam, Andukrama Vivastavi, Dahanamani Vaganti, Monomativuna, Mahadinatava, Ilani, Mahamati Varanea. Former permanent representatives of Sri Lanka to the United Nations, Dr. Palitha Kohona and Tamara Kulanayagam, emphasized that the international community should not hold the right to intervene in domestic affairs of Sri Lanka. We've seen uh, the international community and the United Nations showing an undue amount of interest in what is going on in Sri Lanka's domestic affairs at the moment. It is highly unusual and not satisfactory. It is contrary, in my view, to international law and practice. Domestic matters, especially in the political arena, are for the Sri Lankans to resolve themselves. Diplomats have a certain uh, have to abide by certain rules under the Vienna Convention on diplomatic practice and it seems that this has not been observed to any extent by the diplomats involved in Sri Lanka of course there are two parties and there have been different views expressed on what happened on the 26th of October and subsequently. Parties have now gone to court. There are two interim orders issued by the courts and I think we should leave it at that. And senior diplomats should know better than that. The UN should know better than that. External interference only encourages lawlessness and uh, other undesirable activities to take place. There should be no fear of the West intervening because they have no grounds for interference. The judicial system is functioning, as we know, and we still have the option of going for general elections, which I think we have to do because it's now up uh, to the people to decide. Under the UN Charter, all human rights issues uh, can only be resolved through international cooperation and not coercion. The West has tried to, uh, to seek legitimacy for them to intervene in the affairs of the uh, sovereign states by introducing this norm that they have called, they call responsibility to protect, which according to which they say that if the government of the country concerned is unable or unwilling to protect its own citizens, then the West or the so-called international community they're talking about themselves have the right to intervene. But this has been rejected by the UN uh, General Assembly, by the other countries. Uh, on, the, on the question of UN sanctions, I know there's a lot of fear about uh, possible UN sanctions. We have to be very clear that sanctions will not be coming from the United Nations, but they will be unilateral Western sanctions. Such unilateral sanctions are prohibited by international law. They're a violation of international human rights, human, humanitarian law, and the Charter of the UN. <laughs> 
and police fired tear gas um, at, to disperse a group of unemployed graduates protesting near the Lotus Roundabout in Colombo. Today, riot police resorted to using tear gas after the protesters attempted to push through a roadblock um, which had been set up to prevent them from reaching the presidential secretariat. And we take a short commercial break. We'll be back with more news on the other side. Do stay with us. You are watching Sri Lanka's award winning news channel, Other Verena 24 7. On to your business news, the special commodity levy on imported onions and potatoes was reduced by 20 rupees with effect from midnight tonight. The Ministry of Finance and Economic Affairs announced that the levy will be reduced to 20 rupees per kilogram from the existing 40 rupees per kilogram. According to central bank data, red onions were retailed at around 190 rupees a kilogram in the petal market, while potatoes were selling at 200 rupees. And in the equities market, Colombo's all share price index gained 0.10% to close 5.87 points higher at 6,025.20. And the SP SL20 index of more liquid stocks ended at a sharp 0.71% higher, up 22.57 points to 3,201.08. Market turnover was just below 500 million rupees, with net foreign selling at 13.9 million rupees, down from 415 million rupees on Friday. Let's now take a look at a brief update on today's market performance. In the bond market, the secondary market yield curve remained mostly unchanged as market participants were seen remaining on the sideline amidst a prolonged uncertainty prevailing in the political front. Limited activity was witnessed on mid to long term maturities while the overall market witnessed thin volumes. In the equity market, bows ended in green for the sixth consecutive session on the gains made by Commercial Bank and Sunshine Holdings. Turnover and volume dipped compared to the previous day while 27% of turnover was derived from crossings. A net foreign outflow was witnessed for the fifth consecutive day with high foreign participation. And the Sri Lankan rupee strengthened against the US dollar in the spot market today, with the currency ending at around 178 rupees and 60 cents to 75 cents against the US dollar. We take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other major currencies during the day. And in some international business news, U.S. President Donald Trump and China's Xi Jinping have agreed to a temporary truce in the bitter trade dispute boosting global markets. Donald Trump said that China will reduce and remove the 40% tariffs it places on U.S. cars imported into China. China, however, has declined to confirm Trump's announcement, which was made on Twitter without providing details. Over dinner at the G20 summit, they agreed to not increase tariffs for 90 days to allow for talks. The move, if confirmed, would be welcomed by car industry 
unsettled by the escalating U.S.-China trade war. Meanwhile, markets in Asia rallied after the news of a truce on the trade war. In China, Hong Kong's key index climbed 2.5 percent and the Shanghai Composite Index jumped 2.6 percent. Japan's Nikkei rose 1 percent. The gains also spread to Europe with the UK's FTSE 100 index, the CSC 40 in France and Germany's DAX index all up by about 2 percent. In news overseas, the small gas-rich state of Qatar announced today that it will quit the organization of petroleum exporting nations from January 1st after nearly 60 years taking a swipe at the group's de facto leader, Saudi Arabia. Making the announcement, the state oil company Qatar Petroleum said it wanted to focus on the country's gas ambitions. Qatar, the world's biggest exporter of liquefied natural gas, has been under a diplomatic and economic embargo by its Arab neighbors for the past 18 months over allegations that it funds terrorism. Doha, one of OPEC's smallest oil producers but the world's biggest liquefied natural gas exporter, is embroiled in a protracted diplomatic row with Saudi Arabia and some other Arab states. Qatar said its decision was not driven by politics but in an apparent swipe at Riyadh. Minister of State for Energy Affairs Saad al Khabi said, quote, We are not saying we are going to get out of the oil businesses, but it is controlled by an organization managed by a country. Unquote. He, however, did not name the nation. Qatar, which has been a member of OPEC for 57 years, has oil output of just 600,000 barrels per day compared with Saudi Arabia's 11 million barrels per day. But Doha is an influential player in the global liquefied natural gas market with annual production of 77 million tonnes based on its huge reserves on the fuel in the Gulf. Delegates at OPEC, which has 15 members including Qatar, sought to play down the impact. But losing a long-standing member undermines a bid to show a united front before a meeting that is expected to back a supply cut to show up crude prices that have lost almost 30% since an October peak. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is heading to Brussels to meet with U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo. Netanyahu's office said he is set to meet with Pompeo in the Belgian capital to discuss regional developments, although it did not provide specifics. Netanyahu is accompanied by top Israeli intelligence and military officials. The meeting comes as the U.S. administration gears up to release its much-anticipated Middle East peace plan as well as in the wake of the U.S. restoring sanctions on Iran that had been lifted under the 2015 nuclear deal between Tehran and World Powers. Israel, which considers Iran a threat and opposed the nuclear deal from the start, applauded the renewed U.S. sanctions. And delegates from nearly 200 nations began two weeks of talks to tackle deep political divisions at the most important United Nations meeting on global warming since the landmark 2015 Paris deal to shift away from fossil fuels. Yesterday, Fijian Prime Minister Frank Bainmarama decided and declared open the UN Climate Change Conference 2018 in Poland and handed over the presidency of the talks to Mikhail Kutyev, Poland's Deputy Environment Minister. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres issued in his opening remarks a dramatic appeal to world leaders to take seriously the threat of global warming and act boldly to avert a catastrophic rise in temperatures before the end of the century. Expectations are low that negotiations in Katowice at the heart of Poland's coal region will be sufficient to address concerns laid out in reports over recent weeks on the severity of rising greenhouse gas emissions. And I'll be back with your sports and weather updates after this short commercial break. Do stay with us on First at Nine. You are watching Sri Lanka.
Africa's premier news channel, Other Verona 24-7. In sports, Mark Hughes has been sacked as Southampton manager after eight months in charge. Southampton confirmed the move in a statement adding that the search for a new manager to take the club forward is already underway. Mark Hughes joined Southampton in March two months after being sacked by Stoke City. First team assistant coach Kelvin Davies will take charge of the team for the game against Tottenham on Wednesday. The club were one point above the relegation zone at the time and the 55-year-old led them to safety last season by securing two wins from their last four games. However, they have struggled against this season and have only won three of their 22 league games. Before the draw against Manchester United, Southampton were beaten 3-2 by Fulham and knocked out of the EFL Cup on penalties by Leicester. Along with Hughes, assistant first-team manager Mark Bowen and coach Eddie Needsweike have also left the club. You are watching Sri Lanka's number one news channel, Other Therana 24-7. And on to your weather forecast for the next 24 hours. Temperatures are to vary between 20 and 29 degrees Celsius with the highest of 29 expected in Mathara and Putlam districts. Showers or thunder showers will occur in the northern, eastern, north central and Uva provinces with fairly heavy falls of about 75 millimetres expected in these regions. Misty conditions may occur at some places in the central Sabragamo and western provinces during the morning hours. And here's a look at your city by city weather forecast for the next 24 hours. That's all the news we have for you tonight on Other Verona's English News Broadcast. But before we go, as usual, we'd like to leave you with some visuals. Tonight, we take you to the Knuckles Range, where a humanitarian and social responsibility mission, Manusa Verena, set out yet another cleaning project, environment cleaning project, at Matale Knuckles Environment Sensitive Eco Zone. The environmental cleanup project was launched at Sarel in Matale, Naples, Pitavala, Pitavala Patanarada, Riverston and Telgamoya. Enjoy these visuals. Have a pleasant evening. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel. Other Verona, 24-7.